Hello and welcome to this second lecture in this uh, module on communications design and development in this course on marketing strategy excellence. So in this uh, section we are trying to help you understand in depth how can you design and develop communications as a part of your offense and we talked about in the last lecture about generally about marketing communications, what are the various kinds of marketing communications, uh, micro model, macro model, etc. In this uh, lecture, we will talk about how can you go about developing effective communications program and part of that as first step of that, which is setting communication objectives, right? Okay, so let's look at how can you develop effective communications program. Any thoughts? How would you go about developing effective communications program? See, what you need to do is to develop effective communication, follow a systematic process that obviously starts with setting the goals to be achieved by the campaign, the communication campaigns, and uh, ends with assessing the outcome of the program. And the main steps of this are, as you see, you need to start with setting the objectives, then identify the audience, who are the audience that you want to reach out to, what is the message, craft the message, then finalize, decide the media that is most suitable for that message to reach that audience to achieve that objective. It's all aligned to from bottom to top. Then uh, developing a creative approach and finally measuring performance. So that's how the whole process is. Now, what determines the success of the communication campaign? It depends on the viability of the overall strategy and tactics of managing the company's offering. And that becomes the basis for developing your communication plan. Now, and hence, uh, the communication objective, choice of target audience, and design of message typically follows from your overarching marketing strategy, which is basically about who is the target market and what is the value proposition. So how do you go about setting communication objectives? Basically three steps as you see here. Uh, starts with defining the focus of company communication, then setting communication benchmarks, and then determining the communication budgets. Let's take a look at each of these. So defining objective is a task, uh, is basically a specific task and an achievement level that you want to reach with a specific audience in a particular time. So there is a particular task regarding communication that you want to reach with a certain level in, for a particular audience in a particular point of time. And there could be three specific objectives depending on where you are. And we'll talk about how do you decide what should be your objective. One is to create awareness where you inform your audience about the offering. Second is building preferences versus your competing brands. And there you persuade the audience uh, by uh, giving them the benefits of your offering. The third is to final insight action by kind of uh, nudging the audience to act in a way that benefits the company and your offerings. Right. So there are three possible communication objectives. Let's look at each of these in more detail. So creating awareness is the foundation of the brand equity. More the people are aware of your brand, more you have the brand equity. And what does this involve? This involves uh, basically fostering the consumer's ability to recognize or recall your brand in sufficient detail to make a purchase. And this is measured in two ways. One is called recognition and second is recall. And uh, as you can understand, recognition is easier because you see a product, a brand, and you say, yeah, this is uh, enrichment or so this is served. Uh, Whereas recall is, you need to recall from no input as such. Now, where are these appropriate? Now, recall, brand recall tends to be more important for consumers who are receiving marketing communication outside the store area. And uh, when the company offering is not readily visible and available for purchase. So you need to do a complete recall of the brand. Whereas recognition is when you are inside the stores, you can see the product or brand and you are, you can, and then you just need to see whether you can recognize the brand or a product. Now, what does creating awareness require? It involves highlighting awareness of the need of the category or awareness of the specific offering. So that's all about creating awareness. 
Now, what does building preferences uh, involve? It involves uh, your offering's ability to meet a currently relevant consumer need. Very important. Each word is important. Ability to meet currently relevant consumer need. Now, so, some of the needs are what is called negatively oriented. Basically, they are about removing a problem, avoiding a problem. Uh, if uh, currently the com com consumer is not fully satisfied and there's normal depletion of his inventory or product is happening, then you, that's one, pos one type of need. Other needs are positively oriented, like sensory gratification, providing more sensory benefits, intellectual stimulation or social approval. Now, persuasive communication basically tries to create liking and preference for the product and service and conviction of its benefits. So it basically a convincing job of the benefits and the builds a liking for the product and benefit. Now, you can do a comparative uh, communication in nature in some cases. Uh, and here you explicitly compare the attributes and the benefits of two or more brands. Where does it work? Comparative, comparative communication. Where does it work better? It works where you need, uh, when, whenever the situation is, there's a possibility of doing cognitive and effective uh, uh, processes, right? Includes the motivation that are cognitive and effective motivation simultaneously. And when consumers process the advertising in detail, analytical mode. When the situation is where the analysis is possible, you can do a comparative communication. In contrast, the other form of communication, which is reinforced communication, works best when you need to convince current purchase purchasers that they have made the right choices. You are reinforcing their purchase behavior. The third objective that you can set is about inciting action. Now, this involves uh, persuading or motivating consumers to decide to buy your brand or product or take a product-related action. Now, this could come in the form of promotional offers like coupons or two-in-one deals, which can encourage customers to make mental commitment to buy. But many consumers may not have an express category need or may not be in the market when exposed to an ad. So they are unlikely to form purchase intentions. So that's a limitation of this. Now, this kind of communication aims to stimulate purchase of products and services, which is the ultimate objective of any marketing, right? So, how do you, where do these communication objectives emerge? Where, how can you find the right objectives? And this basically, they come from the thorough analysis of the current marketing situation. Now, in the categories uh, which are mature, company where the company is a market leader and brand usage is low, your objective could be to stimulate more frequent purchase, right? And if your product is new, company is not a market leader, brand, then your brand is better than uh, available brand, specifically leader or uh, secondary leader. Your objective might be to convince the, the, the market of a brand superiority of your product. And uh, this, but entirely the objective for the off company offerings uh, determines the current consumer state of awareness. And let's take a look at that. How does that happen? So here you see uh, the current state of consumers' awareness uh, and its implication of uh, two brands, brand A and brand B. Now, uh, the brand A of the total market, if it is 100%, you see 80% are aware. And of the 80%, 60% have tried. And out of the 60% have tried, 80% is disappointed. So here, question is, would you advertise? What will be your uh, objective? Now, obviously, uh, Advertising cannot do anything effectively here because if you advertise, you will generate awareness and trials, which is already reasonably high. But ultimately, customers will get only 20% get satisfied, 80% will get disappointed. So here, the focus of the marketing as a strategy would be in improving product for brand A. Now, brand B is where uh, only 40% of the market is aware and out of which 70% have not tried and whoever has tried, 80% is satisfied. So here is a case where your marketing strategy would be about generating awareness and encouraging trials. And hence, your communication objectives could be in the same line. Now, how do you set communication? Once you set the objective, you need to set the benchmarks. Now, there are two kinds of benchmark that you need to decide. One is the magnitude of the impact. 
if you want to create awareness, how much awareness do you want to create and in what time frame do you want to create because uh, so awareness, preference or action, whatever the objective is, how much and in what time frame is the question that you answer here. Because without such uh, uh, well thought out and express a benchmark, it will be challenging to design an effective communication message and you won't know whether it is meeting your strategic goals. So broadly speaking, two kinds of communication benchmark, quantitative benchmark, specific quantifying a particular objective, say preference. So my current preference level is 10%, uh, I would like to take it to 30%. My awareness level is 20%, I want to take it to 30%. And the time, uh, temporal benchmarks are time frame. Is it within one month, six months, a year, three years? So that's how you set the communication benchmark. The third element of uh, setting communication objectives is to determine the communication budget. Now, this uh, is the most difficult job because there is no, uh, there is a process, but there is no, uh, let's say, uniform way of doing it. The most practical way of uh, determining communication budget is by what is called objectives and task budgeting. And what that requires? That requires you to first define objectives, specific objectives, then identify the work, the task that you would need to perform to achieve these objectives and estimate the cost. So relatively simple to as for the process, but more difficult to do. Now, the overall principle is that total communication bu budget must be set so that ex every extra dollar from the communication expenses is greater than or equal to extra dollar that you will earn from any marketing activities. Because if your advertising or communication goes below that threshold of uh, marginal profit from other marketing activities, why put money on communication is the question before you can correct that, right? So that's how you determine the communication budget. Now, what determines the community marketing budget? Stages in product life cycle. Uh, if the budget is bigger for new uh, products, because you need to establish your awareness and trials versus establish product differentiation, it is uh, more uh, budget will be higher for less differentiated product because you need to spend more to communicate. Uh, larger to build market share rather than to maintain. And uh, more complex the messages are, you need to spend more on marketing budget. Similarly, more you want to reach out target consumers, more you have to spend. And higher the communi uh, competitive communication, you would need to spend more to stay above the noise in the market as so as to say. And your available resources determine the limit and particularly the principle of uh, the marginal dollar that you spend on communication with other marketing uh, uh, strategy. So having looked at how to set communication objectives, what do we do next? In the next uh, lecture, we will look at how can you identify the target audience in line with the overall strategy of the target uh, market already identified. So thank you so much for watching this second lecture on uh, communication design and development. I hope you're continuing to learn new things, continuing to enjoy, and I do look forward to see you again in the next lecture.